There's so much to talk about this morning, isn't there? We're joined now by John Apter, who's National Chair of the Police Federation. Morning to you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And there's so much to talk about, about what happened over the weekend. Let's start what happened in Bristol. Um, and I've read the superintendent there, Andy Bennett, saying, we took a neighbourhood policing approach to avoid causing any tension. Was that a right approach? Well, the public in Avon and Somerset, and Bristol in particular, will be the judge of that. But what my concern is, as the representative body of police officers is that police officers are not putting on necessary danger. And to have no police presence there, I think sent quite a negative message, certainly what I've picked up. Um, and look, I accept that this is incredibly sensitive. Um, and the statue, which in fairness, I didn't know much about until this weekend. I understand there's been a lot of controversy about this statue for many years. So the question is, why didn't those in a local authority consider taking this down long before rather than waiting for the actions. And uh, and I don't agree. You know, I'm a police officer, so I don't support uh, this lawlessness that we saw where the statue was ripped down and rolled down the street and pushed into the, into the river, because that's not how we do things. But I understand the anger. But not to have a police presence there was something that I've, uh, you know, I've been a police officer for 27 years. And that was a, that was a decision that I've not seen taken before. That's very interesting to hear. And we know there has been a huge amount of discussion over many years, and um, particularly around that statue. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And this is why I say that if a statue... Um, you know, there are many things that cause um, uh, upset in communities, but this is certainly about racism. Uh, if the anger has been felt so, uh, so long by so many, then I'd be really interested later on to hear from the mayor um, as to why action wasn't taken before. But look, I, I'm, I'm a police officer. I'm not here to talk about the, the actions of the, of the local authority. It's, it's very interesting because what has happened, this has culminated in this sense of anger on these protests, which, let's not forget, these protests were unlawful because we're in the, in the midst of a deadly pandemic where people shouldn't be gathering. I accept that there is an awful lot of anger and frustration. But my, my real concern and my sadness is that the legitimate message has been hijacked by some who are intent on violence and uh, certainly um, violence against my colleagues, which we saw in London. Uh, yeah, I wanted to come to you and uh, talk about what happened um, in London. And we know that police officers were injured. Um, also, what do you make of what happened with the cenotaph and the statue of Winston Churchill and the policing of that? Well, look, pol policing in this sort of sensitive um, situation is really difficult and we are damned if we do and we're damned if we don't. I know what the commanders within uh, within policing across the country, I know the stance they, they've tried to take on this, which is a softer approach because this is uh, incredibly difficult to police. But there will be many people watching, uh, watching the news and, and I have to say the level of violence against my colleagues wasn't broadcast on major news channels, certainly not, not most of them about the level of violence, and people went to those protests with the intention of causing violence. Uh, that was not widely reported on. So these individuals have hijacked what is a legitimate concern for many, many people. And the cenotaph, you know, many. I'm very proud of our, of our heritage and, and certainly remembering those uh, who laid their lives down for us. You know, and that's just me as an individual, not as a police officer. So to see our cenotaph, um, damaged in, in such a way, you know, is, is painful. It's, it's sad. And I think many people will lose sympathy with what is a legitimate protest. Um, but as I say, the violence levelled at my officers, and not only the violence, but when officers were being injured, having bricks thrown at them, um, being, you know, just the most vile, uh, vile level of violence, then commentators, people stood aside laughing and joking, thinking it's funny, trying to justify this lawless action is an utter disgrace and those people should be thoroughly ashamed of themselves. Um, there has been some criticism, criticism of police um, using the horses um, over the weekend. Was that the right decision? Yeah, police horses have been a, a tactic within public order policing for many, many years. And I, and I would say to people, you know, police horses are incredibly effective um, for violent confrontational situations. But what is the alternative? You know, I heard somebody on social media, where we have an awful lot of experts, it, it appears, say that we should use vehicles. I mean, my God, is that really what people expect, was to drive vehicles into the crowds? Now, police horses are a, an effective tactic. It was terrible what happened. My colleague, 
who was thrown from her horse, very, very seriously injured. But yet again, people on the sidelines laughing and joking about this incident um, is, uh, is, you know, un unforgivable. But, but policing is unpredictable and it's dangerous. We accept that. Uh, but police horses are absolutely the right tactic and, uh, you know, very highly trained. And, you know, we should have more police horses, not fewer, uh, because when they're used uh, effectively, it can, you know, nip things in the bud very effectively. Uh, John Apter, National Chair of the Police Federation, thanks for your time here on Breakfast this morning.